Welcome to I Had No Idea. Do you think we can win this, 2 versus 6, when I'm playing a bad Hellcat and Eric is playing a tier 5 tank disguised as a tier 6? Well, there's only one way to find out. The only spoiler I'm going to give you is that we are going to deal 50% of the enemy's health pool as damage. Let's go! So this is the game, Moravanka, we are in tier 6 vehicles, A46, arguably a tier 5 vehicle, disguised as a tier 6, it is terrible, and me in a pretty much a bad version of the Hellcat, uh, which is a massive, massive powerhouse in tier 6. T78, uh, I kind of like it, but it's just not as good as the Hellcat in any of the aspects. Uh, that does not make it a bad tank, it's still quite powerful, especially when you decide to go to the number 2 key, because the APCRs have insane penetration. And high explosive, also quite usable, uh, with enough penetration for the tier, uh, but that's about it. Uh, it has an okay gun uh, with not so great accuracy, but good DPM and good ammunition choices. So what you see us do here is we go to a typical position, so I'm going to put a couple of shots Massive alpha damage, 240 in tier 6 is huge, uh, but the accuracy is so good that we, even though I aim for one tank, I hit another. <laughs> uh, but in quick succession, we put two shots in, that's 500 damage, maybe we can put one more in, let's see if the ridgeline is there, mm, we'll have to see after the battle if we have hit this one. Uh, standard penetration on this tank is also uh, quite good, so you can make credits while playing this tank, but it is a tier 6, so keep that in mind that the income is not going to be great. So, throughout this game I'm going to make a few quick cuts because otherwise that would be an almost 15 minute long game and I know that your time is precious and valuable. So, from now on I'm going to be making quick cuts to go and skip the boring parts because in this battle there's going to be quite a lot of thinking and planning, especially towards the end when we are going to be down to 2 versus 6. What you see here now is our cooperation that is not based on uh, communication, really. Uh, my wife just came back from work when that battle was happening, so I was chatting to her. I was not on Discord, not really paying attention. After all, when we jump down to tier 6, we try to relax, have fun. Do you know why we chose those two tanks to play? Because they are cool. Not because they're good. Do you pick your tanks based on the looks and based on the historical uh, aspect of them? We often do. Uh, just yesterday I was playing with uh, Eric again, and I was playing in the Poodle. Not because it's great, but because it's an actual historical vehicle. We like that part of the game, and we're definitely uh, trying to make up for the flaws in the game. We're trying to make the game more fun uh, than it actually is by doing those silly little things, especially down uh, in lower tiers. I mean, tier 6 is pretty much as low as I would go. Um, a cheeky spot on the ARL, and didn't expect him to still be there, but hey, can't complain there. What you see here is we are stuck together because A46 has an insanely low DPM, I think it's like 1600, and my DPM is quite high, so we can uh, definitely work together. Eric is uh, doing more of a spotting role. No, no luck with the high explosive penetration here, but this high explosive shot can work, and it does roll up to 400. It's the highest roll, um, so definitely worth swapping those around. At this tier, it's, I find this vehicle quite comfortable. Uh, it is fast enough, it is accurate enough, uh, the penetration is outstanding, and the damage output is quite high. So it is a fun tank to play and it, it can carry. The amount of hit points is a bit of a problem. Uh, one thing I don't really understand is how come A46 has fewer hit points than me? How is it not as fast as me? Uh, it is more nimble, but barely. Uh, then switch to APCR just to go through the Churchill, and can we do this? As you can see, the bloom is quite big on this tank. If you want to play it, I highly, highly recommend you using the rotation device. Uh, it does help. Like 295 high explosive penetration on the M10 is massive. And then the aim time. The aim time is not too bad on this tank. It's the bloom that uh, kind of lets it down. But I digress. Now, what you see here is Eric supporting the other flank, and I am promising BDR that I'm going to go in and help him out. This is going to cost me a lot. Now, check this out. 
I need to clear this funk, I need to help to clear this funk. My approach was not perfect, I hesitated. I drive forwards, I wanted to uh, avoid uh, getting tracked, so I drove forward, he damaged my engine, I fixed my engine, I took him out, and now I am in a bit of a pickle because I expected the BDR to live a little longer, and now I am against the new Japanese heavy tank. I move back, he hits me through the building, I do not hesitate, I go forward, I put one in, and now my thing is, I need to track him on the ridge line. it's my only chance. So, I do exactly that. As I shoot him, he fires, uh, probably throw uh, off his aim, and then I saw my reticle turn red on the penetration marker, so I probably failed that shot, but RNG helped me out, so hear me out. When the penetration reticle turned red, that meant that if my shell went where I aimed, I would have bounced. That means the shell didn't go where I aimed, and it penetrated. So I got saved by the RNG. You, you need luck every now and then. Skill enough is not enough. Skill alone is not enough, is what I meant. Now, good and also quite important shot on the Churchill because at this stage we already know that this is going to be more difficult than we anticipated. At this stage I got my kiss goodnight and I was told to be quiet. Spoiler alert, I'm not going to be quiet. And I uh, got back on Discord to speak to Eric because Eric, this is doable. Because of this map and the layout of us and the enemy team, we have half the map, the enemy has the half the map, and even if we lose the remaining tanks, which we do, we can win this. And we both communicate now on Discord and we know that, okay, hear me out, this is doable. He confirms, yeah, this is doable. We just need to be very careful about what we do, because after all, I have 49 HP. This is quite difficult. So a quick cut here to go to the next stage. Any coffee enjoyers? Let's meet in the comment section. So this is where we lose the artillery. And as you've seen in the title section, we are also going to lose the uh, other guy and it's going to be two versus six now. This is nothing unusual. We've been there before. This is winnable because it's a TD and a light tank playing together against six random people. So this is our advantage. We definitely don't have the hit point advantage, but we can make up for it with my DPM and Eric's view range. Maybe not even the view range, it's his positioning and camouflage. He is using a silent exhaust. Mm, it can work uh, in low tiers. Uh, th there is no CVS, so he has to rely on the old school mechanics. And uh, honestly, this is where also, uh, credit to Eric, we have uh, made it possible because I am a stubborn person and he told me to fall back. I said, no, but I don't have a shot, please fall back. So I fell back. So T29 makes a grave mistake here because he keeps moving forward. I miss my shot, but that's not a problem because I'm using the double bushing mechanics. So when I turn the bush fully uh, opaque, I can then shoot. I shoot once and I shoot twice. APCR more than enough to go through his side and front at almost any angle, uh, unless it's an extreme angle, which would be an auto ricochet. Now, this is where we're starting to think about time. Six minutes left in the game and two hold down monsters, full HP TD, which we don't know where he is, and Churchill 1. We don't care about the Churchill 1, we know that he's a one-shot because I have reduced him down to a one-shot, and there is the SMV. And Eric said that he did get spotted here, so we are no longer surprised, at least he is not. But we think about how do we approach him. Leffe coming. <laughs> this thing is scary. I've played a little bit of tier five before this game, it was not a pleasant experience. After I take a break, I usually come back to World of Tanks at lower tiers to you know, get myself up to speed. And tier five is not a very welcome place. If I was a new player in World of Tanks and I started uh, and I reached tier five, I'd probably quit. But I digress again. And this is where Eric goes in for the shot on the SMV. After the game, uh, he told me that he actually didn't get spotted for that shot, so very happy with the result. Uh, bush mechanics work <laughs> in strange ways. Now this is two TDs and a Churchill with artillery 
against us. It's time for me to move up. He makes a round circle and he says I am getting spotted here. So he got hit for 276 and he says it's a Dicker Max that shot him and he shot him from A7. He found the Churchill, so we now know that the Churchill is there. Dicker Max is there, that means the SMV is isolated. So we make our way around and the next cut here. Mm, San Francisco Bay with oat milk, lovely. There is the SMV. Another mistake, but cannot complain about that. <laughs> that was quite funny because we shot him at the exact same time without telling each other that we are about to shoot because, well, in th at this moment, I think we knew that we almost have it because we have the information and we have the cooperation that the enemy does not. And this is a gift. I switch back to AP because there is no need for an overkill APCR and the Lefe is gone. Always happy to kill a Lefe. So this is it already, brothers in, arm, arm, brothers in arms. Six kills, a massive amount of damage. And we go for the Dicker Max and the Churchill. Overall, that was textbook play. Use the view range to your advantage, use the penetration and the TD behind you. This is what you can do even without a platoon if you watch your light tanks play. I I have this habit of always playing with the light tank. I don't know my light tank in my team most of the time, I don't platoon every single day, but when I play solo I always look where the light tank is going, especially when I'm playing TDs. And this is the reason why. He is in front of me, he has massive camo, he has good view range, and I have the gun. This is my advantage and this is what I'm trying to do. But we have two minutes on the clock and Dicker Max, he can kill us both really. So we still need to approach this carefully. I am going to drive up a little, see if I'm getting spotted from the typical camper position over there and I don't get spotted. So what I do here is I go up farther and do you know what happens? I get spotted. Panic moment and I die, but Eric is now unloading on the Dicker Max with his massive 1600 DPM. <laughs> it's ridiculous how they made this tier five, a tier six. So he is going to auto aim on the Dicker Max to take him out and luckily he does because he has a turret and Dicker Max does not. And then he knows that the Churchill one is shooting him for about 80, 90 damage, so he is safe to approach. He knows where he is, one minute left, and you think we got it? I think we do. This is the game. <sighs> for us, uh, I'm not going to call it a game of the year because it's uh, tier six and, uh, well, tier six is hardly um, as exciting as higher tiers, but I am going to call it a game of the month. Let me take you to the garage. And this is the game, 4130 damage, Eric did 2294, 1600 base experience on him, 1400 base experience on me, this is crazy, 100,000 credits difference, uh, difference. So profit and this is T78 in a nutshell, as you can see standard equipment, good ammunition choices, really love to see it, uh, overall the aim time, uh, as I said, 45 penetration, 221 penetration, very good uh, camo, very good view range with coated optics. Overall, a very good vehicle, fun to play, makes credits. If, if you don't know what to do and if you look for some easy gameplay, this is definitely one of them. 467 meter view range with my brothers in arms and, well, it is a good crew, not gonna lie, I think this is my E3 or E4 crew. Uh, my field mods if you're interested in that and that's pretty much the takeaway of the day you don't have to play in op tanks to have crazy carries uh, let me know in the comment section do you play tanks purely based on looks because i find myself doing that just you know keeping things interesting for me and honestly those games are the reason why we still play world of tanks in 2024 this game can still be fun at any tier but for us, that any tier is only between 6 and 10. Under 6, it's quite terrible. <laughs> I'll see you in the comments section. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching today's video. If you like this one, I'm sure you'll like one of these two as well. And if you've already seen them all, stay tuned for another one.
we always do our best to make sure that we release at least four videos every month, so there's always something to look out for. In the meantime, I'll see you on the battlefield.